اللهم وعلى رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My, my dear respected brothers and elders, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very happy to see your faces again, alhamdulillah. Um, again, you know, these weekly uh, ta'aleem, these khalaqas are very beneficial for us. And it serves as a, as a reminder and sometimes may seem repetitive. And what's the point every week? We're already going Juma, but it is not enough. Again, like I keep repeating every week, the evils that we're getting constantly, it is not enough to go just for Juma. It is not enough just to pray. We need some effort for Deen where we sacrifice a few minutes of our time. And we say that, you know, this is for Allah. This is for me to get closer to Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu So today I want to speak to something about uh, the love between Muslim brothers. Uh, SubhanAllah, we live in such a time and age. And I've seen it myself numerous times where for the smallest, smallest of things, brothers get divided, even blood brothers. And SubhanAllah, it's really a testimony and it shows what our character and what we are like. You know, how shallow we have become and how easily, how easily we start to hold grudges. You know, there was a time where, you know, in this time of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, where, you know, something would take place and what would they do? What was, the, what was, what, what did they resort to? The first thing they resorted to was getting up and going to the Prophet sallallahu and asking him and telling him about the situation that has happened between him and his brother, whether it be blood brother or not, or brother in Islam, and have the Prophet sallallahu resolve this. But today, unfortunately, because of our ego and because of our pride, we actually find it difficult to go and tell someone that's older, tell someone that's more wise, tell someone that's like an imam or a sheikh or somebody to solve this problem between the two. And actually, this is looked at, looked as, looked at as something weak. It is actually looked as something weak in Islam, that why are you going and telling your problems to others? Why are you involving others? Uh, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're a snitch and so on. These are the words that we use in our society for these sorts of people. This Quranic ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He says, ikhwa, That indeed the believers are brothers. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That doesn't mean, so whether we like it or not, whether we're from this, same nationality, different country, whatever it is, if we are believers, we are brothers. And this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it refers to the relations. If it means their love must be a brotherly love and they must respect and love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if they were love brothers. Many may not even be aware, but the connection that I or you can have with a Muslim brother may be a lot stronger and longer lasting than the bond of blood. You know, sometimes you grow up with a person, he's your blood brother, you live with him, but he takes a different path than yours. Maybe he goes off din, and your relationship with him escalates and it, it, you know, it, it doesn't become so strong and you swift your ways. But when you have a connection for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and wallahi I'm a witness to this myself, that I have certain brothers which our connection and our relationship is only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, this connection, I feel like there's absolutely nothing that can ruin. They can advise me and I can advise them. Without getting upset, we have the best interest at heart for one another. And this is the sort of relationships that we have to come. You know, I mentioned this mentioned this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ time and time again but my personal opinion is that this hadith uh, again my personal opinion is this hadith if we use it as a guideline for in our lives then we inshallah will be successful why it is because if we surround ourselves with the correct people I feel like Whenever we go astray, we will always come back in line. Whenever we slip up, we will always come back in line. And what is this hadith? Is the Prophet ﷺ says, Al maru ala dini khaliri. That a man, he is on the deen of his friend. A man, he is on the deen of his friend. Falyandur ahadukum mayu khalil. So let him be careful as to who he befriends. Let him, let him be careful as to who he makes his companion in this world, his friend. Because the one that you spend time with in this world, you will spend time with in the hereafter. So we, we want to make sure that the people we are spending time with here are people of Jannah, inshallah. So I feel like, again, what I was referring to before, that even though sometimes 
we may fall, we may go astray, we may slip through a sin, but because we ha we are surrounded with people that are on deen for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I feel like we will constantly, because we'll, when you're in a, in a good environment with people that are on deen, then when you slip up, you actually feel like you're out of place and you quickly try and rectify yourself. Whereas if you're with people that are below you in deen, people that are committing sins openly, people that are open transgressors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of us are transgressors, but there's a difference between the one that conceals his sins mm -hmm. and one that goes out openly and commits his sins and lets the whole world know. Mm -hmm. So if we are with these people that commit sins openly and do these things, then what's going to happen? When we are amongst them and we make sin, we fall into sin, then we are not going to feel bad. We are not going to feel out of place because we're going to feel a part of them. We're going to feel a part of them. We're going to feel like, you know, we're one of them. But when we surround ourselves with people that are on deen, then we will feel out of place. So my personal opinion is that if you surround yourself with good people, with people that when you look at them, the Prophet ﷺ described, what is it like when you see a friend, when you see a person that you have a relationship with God for the sake of Allah? Is when you look at him, he reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you speak to him, or when he speaks rather, sorry, that your knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases. Let us ask ourselves, how many of us have friends that when you look at him, you are reminded of Allah? You can see the nur on his face. You can see the way he walks, the way he talks, the way he, uh, you know, the way he acts and the way his connections are with people. That this is a true role model of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is he's, 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 he's guiding towards the direction of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his character. So how many of us can actually say we have friends like this? And Wallahi, my brothers, it is better to be alone than to be in bad company. It is better to be alone than be in bad company. And it is better to be in good company than be alone. Let us make that. It is better to be in good company than be alone. So if we can't find good friends, then make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, our families. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is maintaining this whole earth and everything that we see and can't see. All the stars, all the, the moon, the sun, every single grain of sand on this earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of. Do you think it is actually difficult for Allah that He will not send you a friend that is on deen? He will not guide somebody that can you know, assist you, somebody that you can have good relations with for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because, you know, if I tell you, brother, make dua for a good friend, you think, oh, brother, don't, you know, what do you mean make dua for a good friend? Is Allah just going to send someone from the sky, you know, like some angel or something to, to hang around with me? But this is the problem. Allah says that, uh, the Prophet ﷺ told us that Allah is as you think of Him, as you believe Him to be. So if you believe or if you think that Allah is not going to send me anything or if you believe that you know I can make dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to sort out my financial problems, but what is Allah going to do? Send me money from the sky or if it's going to fall or, you know, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not help you. But if you have yaqeen and you have this belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assist you, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely can assist you. So. Again, we, we surround ourselves with people and we ask Allah if we don't have those people in our lives. Let us remind ourselves of the story of Yusuf السلام, and his brothers where Allah SWT says in the Quran, Indeed, in the story of Yusuf السلام, and his brothers, there are lessons for all who ask. His blood brothers, they were not able to contain their jealousy and hatred. And what does this tell us? That even amongst the prophets, that there was jealousy, there was hatred, there was difficult times. And what did they decide to do? And we've all heard this story, but again, the a reminder it benefits us that they decided that how were they going to get rid of him some suggested to kill him even imagine their own blood brother they suggested to kill him but their feelings overcame them so instead they threw him in a well they threw him in a well and when when we choose brothers for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of deen then such things like this are not possible but again what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that indeed the believers are brothers this is how we establish these connections by looking for people that are on deen, that are looking for people that fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because again, your blood brothers one day may throw you in a well, like they did to Prophet Yusuf. We do not get to choose our blood brothers and sisters, but we definitely get to choose the brothers in deen for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen, my brothers, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the Muhajir and the Ansar. And he says, and hold firmly to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not be divided. Remember Allah's favor upon you when you were enemies, then he united your hearts. So you, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's grace, you became brothers and you were at the brink of the fiery pit and he saved you from it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the Muhajir and the Ansar from the fire of Jahannam and they were very close to it as Allah says in this ayat. But why? Because of how much, how much, that's why they were called the Ansar. Those that don't know the Ansar means those that helped those that assisted and the muhajir are those that migrated 
they, they, were, they were so assisting to their brothers. They had so much love for them. Just, you know, imagine somebody just comes to your country, that just comes into your land, into your town, that to the extent how, uh, how uh, helpful they were for the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu that in one narration, one Sahabi, he was given the duty of taking care of one of the Muhajir, one of the migrators that came from Mecca. He said to him, I have two wives, pick which one you like, I will divorce her and you can get married to her. Here's half my house, you can take it. This is what they were ready to do. Can you imagine one of us doing this? No way, I don't, I can't picture anyone in this, in the, alive today that will do something like this. But look at their level. That's why they were radiallahu anhu wa radwain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with them and they were pleased with Allah. This is how they attained this title. So, you know, if we want to be like this, then we have to overlook small things. Today, wallahi, for the smallest of things, smallest of things, little issues, brothers are ready to, 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 to uh, take it to their grave, so to speak. You know that saying, they take it to their grave. And that's it. You wrong him once and there's no going back. You know, sometimes we don't know what halat people may be in. You know, and that's why the Prophet ﷺ advised us always make excuses for your brothers. Always make excuses. What does that mean? That means he done something wrong to you, but make an excuse for him. Ah, oh, maybe he was having problems with his wife at home, and he was struggling so much that day he wasn't able to. Maybe he promised you something. He said, you know what? Today I'm going to do this for you, and he didn't do it. You make an excuse for him. You forgive him. Don't straight away. Oh, that's it. I don't forgive him. Uh, you know, I don't need him. He's done. He's I cut him out of my life, and that's it. We have to have mercy because how do we expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us if we're not going to have mercy towards others? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees us showing mercy to insan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at us with mercy. And definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us when He sees us being merciful. But when He sees us being harsh and arrogant, I can ask you my brothers, who is doing more injustice? These people to us or us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Definitely it is us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many times we do not fulfill the haqq? How many times do we miss our prayer? How many times do we leave out reading the Quran? We commit sins day and night. We are committing sins. We don't even know it. Sometimes we are committing sins. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and forgiving. And he says, if you come to me a hand span, I come to you an arm's length. If you come to me walking, I come to you running. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready to forgive, but we are not ready to forgive. For small trivial matters, how many, I don't even want to get into the cases, how many blood brothers, blood brothers, they grew up in the same house, they drank from the same mother, they fed, they ate and drank from the same cup, slept in the same bed, and today they're not taught. I personally know people, numerous people, that don't speak to each other anymore, blood brothers, not, for years they're not speaking to each other. Wallahi, this has become our condition, this is everywhere you go, you'll hear about things like this. And why? You ask, sometimes it's over money, sometimes it's over something in the family. It's what my wife said and his wife said and this one said and my mother-in-law said this and, and that's it, finished. This is not the attitude of a Muslim. You know, it's, it's okay to be angry. Everybody can be angry, but we need to know how to control ourselves. We need to know how to step on our, you know, hold the tongue when we are angry, move away from the situation because when you're angry, you make decisions, definitely you will regret later. So. I think it comes down to arrogance and pride. If we can't forgive people, you know, if we can't put that arrogance and pride down to say, you know what, my brother, you wronged me, but still I'm going to forgive you for the sake of Allah. Imagine how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at you with mercy. Imagine one brother, he's a beautiful example. He says, imagine you go and your child, he does some, uh, your child, he does something wrong and the, uh, Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that, you know, and this, this can also be a beautiful example for giving, not just for giving forgiveness, but even for, even for giving charity, even for giving away. You know, he says that imagine your son comes to you and you give him something, you ask him for something good, you tell him to, you know, you buy something for him nice and you ask him to share it. You ask him to share it with another child. And he doesn't want to, he refuses. And you promise him, you, you know, you promise him, you say, just share it, give the child, give your friend a lot, give him something that I've given you. And I promise you, I'll give you 10 times that. I promise you, you know, forgive this, forgive this person. I promise you, I'll gift you, I'll give you whatever you like. Just And that child, he doesn't want to, he refuses. He says, no, I don't want to. And you, you're, you're guaranteeing him, my son, if you do this, I promise you, I'll give you 10 times more. But still, we, the child is saying that. Imagine how hurt the father will feel. Imagine. Then imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he's saying, you know, he's looking down at us. We are his slaves. And he's saying, forgive one another. We, when, if, you were to just, if you were able to just see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for you, 
if you would just be able to see what he's prepared for you, then you would have a completely different mindset. You know, you would forgive, you'd want to be, because brother, I know what my sins are. And I need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness in every way, shape or form. Every single way, I need to take it with two hands, with, with my legs and my feet, I need to take Allah's forgiveness. And this is one of the manners in which we do it. We do not look at these small, trivial problems that we have. All of us make mistakes, all of us have bad days, we wake up on the wrong side of the bed. But we have to forgive one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we maintain these re relationships and we look for people that will remind us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People that will encourage us to do good. And we stay away from people that are going to encourage us towards bad and evil. Even if they be in your own family. But with respect my brothers, many times people come onto deen or they want to practice this or they hear this. And what do they do? Oh, brother, I can't hang around with you anymore. You're bad influence for me. You know? Hikmah. Wisdom, my brothers, we have to have wisdom in a nice way, in a respectful manner. You remove yourself from this relationship. You know, you make excuses, whatever you need to do, but in a nice way, you know, because at the end of the day, we want those people to also, we want to soften their hearts. We want to turn them onto deen. We don't want to turn people away from deen. So this hikmah also comes with time, but we have to think about what we're doing. We have to consult our shuyukh. My brothers, again, and inshallah, after every reminder, I will also mention because Ramadan is so close. Ramadan is so close. And I hope, inshallah, from the last two talks that we've been giving, that everyone has been preparing for Ramadan. I hope that everybody has started reading Quran, fasting Mondays, Thursdays, uh, doing these small acts of ibadah that will prepare us. So when Ramadan comes, inshallah, we are already at a, at a decent pace. If we're not running, at least we're jogging. At least we're jogging. Not that we get up in Ramadan. Not that we start praying in Ramadan and start fasting. It's going to be very difficult for those that didn't fast in this month in Shaban. Very difficult if they didn't fast something and Ramadan comes. And it's longer days now as well. The hours have increased. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding. Give us this tawfiq. Save us from the fire of Jahannam. And unite us as brothers in this life and in the hereafter, inshallah. And save us from all those bad and evil evil, evil company. Amin ya rabbal alameen. Jazakumullah khayran wa qawli hadha. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiruh. Inna huwa al-ghafoor rahim.